Thanks so much for tuning back in, guys. Today is going to be a great topic. I want to take the time to talk to you about kitchen island designs. Especially here in the US, people are loving those grand open concept kitchens. And that includes usually a, a nice sized island with overhang for seating. Now, there's a lot of things you should do, you shouldn't do, you really shouldn't do because they're going to cost you. So all those tips and tricks is something I wanted to discuss with you guys, give you some input, give you some design ideas in the, in the following slideshow, I'll go over some different concepts and definitely give you all the input you need to create that perfect kitchen island. My name is Kasten Kopp, kitchen designer with King's Kitchen, and this is your spot to get that in-depth knowledge on how to design and remodel your own kitchen. Now let's jump right in. Okay, so when it comes to islands, there's a ton of different ways how you can design your island and um, have it be functional or integrate enough seating for your family or certain workstations to really make it um, you know, work for your family and for your kitchen. And I wanted to start a little bit from the easier side down to the more complex side when it comes to islands. And this first picture is really the most basic way you can build an island, which is um, in this case, they have cabinets in the front, standard front cabinets, 24 inches deep. They'll have another set of 12 inch deep uh, cabinets on the back side, as you can see handles by the seating area. Everything is covered on the sides uh, with a panel, but then you have the countertop just overhanging by nine or 12 inches. There's no kind of extra support needed when you overhang um, by nine or 12 inches using quartz. It's absolutely feasible. And this is a very, very simple and efficient way to build an island with overhang and seating. Next on the list, uh, it starts getting a little bit more intricate. So this island now has posts. So this may mean that we have an overhang that's, let's say, over 12 inches. So maybe there's a 15 inch overhang. Um, it's a lot more comfortable to sit at a deeper overhang, especially if your island is going to be the center point. A lot of people are going away from back breakfast tables and really just sitting their family at the island in the morning. So having a really nice deep overhang for somebody to sit comfortably is very important. Also, this looks like it's a very wide island. So those extra four or five inch thick posts that you see here on the ends really lend a lot of support uh, for structural purposes too. So really nice here. I love how it was wrapped on the bottom with extra trim to really make it look like a furniture piece. Next on the list is an island. Uh, that's kind of what I like to do. Um, when you have posts, I love to wrap them with an additional three inch filler and just sit it slightly back from the posts. That's really why I, I chose this picture. I found it online because it makes your island look like a piece of furniture, almost like the overhang is built in. It's a table. And I really, really like this way of wrapping posts and making them look integrated. So again, all you need to do is use an additional three inch tall filler here, and then your installer can just kind of um, mounted right in between the posts. Another cool way of designing an island, instead of using posts, but still having some kind of structural support for deeper overhangs, you can use columns. So this island shows a really nice, simple way of using, it's probably like a three inch thick column on both ends to just extend the depth of the island which then gives you a really nice countertop support. Remember, your countertops are super, super heavy. I mean, that's no joke. And especially when people want, you know, islands that are eight foot, nine foot, 10 foot, okay? I have an island that we're designing, it's 13 feet. It's the absolute max for the slab size, you know? That's a lot of weight. You have to think about, hey, how can I make this island structural sound so, you know, we're investing our money correctly here and nobody gets hurt. You have a lot of people sitting there. So using columns is a really good way of adding support. And in this picture, you can see they added um, 
looks almost like a 1.5 inch filler or a 3 inch filler as well underneath the countertop on the back side to wrap the entire thing and make it look again really built in and uh, really nice like a piece of furniture so I, I really love this idea of using columns super easy looks cool Next on the list is something that's been popping up a lot, a lot more, and it's the waterfall island. So obviously you don't have to finish your cabinets on the sides with cabinet parts. You can absolutely use your matching countertop material and simply run it down to the floor. Again, this is called a waterfall edge detail because your countertop basically just waterfalls down to the ground. It's really important to note here, you're paying for a lot of countertop because you're paying for the full, you know, square footage that runs down. You're paying for edge detail that needs to get fabricated. So this is not a cost efficient way of designing an island, but it's a stunning way of designing an island. And it's, it's super popular. It's definitely an eye catcher, a centerpiece. It's a jaw dropper when people come to your house. It's super cool. Something I would want to point out is that if you are designing an island with a waterfall, please make sure the fabricator you're working with, um, when he gives you a quote or they give you a quote, please ensure, does it include or does it not include the back polish of the inside waterfall legs? As you can see here, the inside on the back waterfall is exposed. Now, when you get a standard slab, you order a standard slab of quartz or quartz side, the back side is not finished. It's usually a little rough, it's unpolished, and you know that's an additional charge that you have to ensure that it's included. And I have to tell you, not everybody will ask you, hey, do you want to include this? And then you'll get it installed and nobody asked you, and here you are with an unfinished inside look, just because the majority of people don't care. You know, it, it's a personal preference, but it's important that you discuss this with your fabricator. But definitely a very cool look of designing an island. Okay, so the next island is a really fun idea on adding integrated seating. And again, everybody, these pictures are just off of Pinterest. It's a, it's, it's a great way to find, you know, quick and easy uh, kitchen pictures or kitchen island design ideas. And I just wanted to grab some from there, but please know that they are from Pinterest. So if anything is blurry or out of size, please apologize. Now, when you are designing a kitchen island that has integrated seating, just take your time in designing it because it really takes some effort in understanding all of your heights, your seating height. What are you gonna use to support the seats? Are you using um, drawer bases, shorter drawer bases? Are you using just two by fours and framing it out? How are you going to cover all of your exposed ends? Are you going to add panels or finished ends? If you have panels, are you going to have detailed panels like in this picture that match your door styles? Is there additional framing or additional trim going all the, all the way around? So there's really a lot that goes into these intricate islands. They are not cost efficient. Believe me, trim gets really expensive, but they sure are super cool looking. I mean, this is a fun, cool island. So it's all personal preference. When it comes to this entire island design, please design what you what your heart desires. You know, it's not about oh, what is super in or, you know, what did Pinterest tell me to do? No, this is about how does your family work? How do you interact in your kitchen? What does your daily schedule look like? And then design your space in your island to make that work to support your daily habits, okay? So last but not least, um, I wanted to showcase this picture. And it's fun. It's actually from my personal Pinterest boards um, of just nice spaces that I save and I love this island and that is something that has been popping up um, like here and there on Pinterest and if you take a closer look you start noticing it it's these islands that almost look more like a table because the cabinetry does not go all the way to the floor and I really like how you have posts on the ends and then you connect it all with cabinetry in the middle. Please note, you might have to use a little bit extra framing. There might be some two by fours running across 
the bottom of this island to make it all work. Extra, um, extra hardware to make everything attach and be stable. Um, you also have to think about if you want water connections or electrical in your island. This island is considered more of a table, so there's probably no electrical. It's not attached to the floor. There's no water connection. Obviously, if you want all those things, those are going to run into the floor. You may not want to go for a design like this, but it's a really cool kind of way to add, I don't know, almost like an antique flair to a kitchen um, in just a different aspect. I'm, I'm really liking this and I thought it was a cool thing to show you guys. Guys, I think we covered all the basics that will really help you design that perfect island for your kitchen. But as always, if there are more questions, suggestions, or you just want to say hi, make sure to leave your comment below and I'd be happy to answer. And I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear from you guys if there's any questions or situations um, you're running into problems you're running into on your kitchen design or remodel and then make a video about it. So don't be shy. Leave your comments below and then I will get back to you. And um, other than that, I'm wrapping up and I will see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.